all bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on this glorious and beautiful day. And I say beautiful because the rain, there's a reason for everything. We also thank you for allowing the family to get back together again on another Sunday and to enjoy each other's company. And as we praise, honor, and glorify you, we ask that you come into the house and touch each and every one of us. And as we go about this service, we ask all this in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Son of God, and in his name we pray. Amen. Got a couple more that's been added to the prayer list, but of course all our church family, we all need a little prayer. And I put Cleve and Irene only because I know they go through they, they go through a lot and there for a while they were coming all the time and everything and I we need to give them their space, but yet we can still pray for them to come back because they are part of the family. And also for Marilyn, how you feeling, Marilyn? Okay today. Okay, well, we'll still keep you on the prayer list. Thank you. Um, and you know, yes? I, I was, you know, uh, Cleve goes through a lot with Irene. I know. Last time. He says, you know, she, she just has a hard time. So we need to, like you said, keep them there. Keep them in prayer. Yes. And I, I, I think sometimes, you know, people, when they go through that and things happen, they think that sometimes it might be a hindrance on other people. Uh -huh. And we're family, you know. I mean, look, you all put up with me and my hearing problem and everything. Well, we have a, young, we have a young man, a young, you know, that brings her son sometimes, and he's um, um, handicapped. Yeah. So, you know, uh, some of them are bad handicapped and just make noises and stuff. Oh, and yeah. Talk and stuff. So, Gene asked his grandpa today where, why they hadn't come, and he says, I think sometimes she's afraid that he's a hindrance. Oh, no. And... It's like, we don't pay any attention. He belongs there, so we don't yeah. care what kind of noises these kids make. Exactly. As long as they're being, hey, yeah. you know, and that kid can't help what he's doing. Yeah. So many people worry about what we worry about. But it's what he thinks of. Yes. You know, we have to think. If you don't you bring them in and teach them. Everyone. Yes. Everyone is welcome. And mom, of course, she still got that pain in her shoulder and neck. My granddaughter, Hope Dunn, she had given birth here, what, two months ago, three months ago, and they found cancer. And she just went through surgery, and uh, we don't know the outcome of that. And we also want to put mom's grandson, Tony Smith, on the list. Um, they, he has cancer. And uh, they wanted to send the clear to, where was it, Indiana, to have a CT done with a dye, and he was allergic to the dye, so now they've scrubbed all of that, and they're sending him to a different oncologist, and that he's just being shuffled through the system right now, so he needs all the prayer. And I'm sure Lisa's friend Julie, and Mike and Debbie Combs, brother Mike and Deb, I'm sure still need all our prayers. With brother Mike, it's, uh... Doctors don't know whether or not they're going to do an operation on his back or not yet. They're in the point of indecision. And uh, she needs his back. Yeah. And Heidi, we'll keep her in our prayers. Have 
have you heard anything from her recently? I just wanted to call her. Uh, and uh, of course, all the lost in the world, because there's a lot of them out there. And uh, they need our prayers. If it's only for the good Lord to prick their hearts or open their eyes to make them realize, hey, look, there's got to be something different. Uh, any praise reports? Well, I'll tell you, the good Lord gave us a beautiful sight driving up here. And if you didn't see it on your phone, as we turned up to come up the back road up here, Karen looked and I saw them at the same time. Three young deer were crossing the road out of the bean field and they got over to the side of the road and I slowed way down and they just stopped and turned around and almost literally looked at us like, wow, somebody not trying to hit us, you know? So Karen got a picture of them and posted on the text message to the church, the group. I'm glad to be here. Amen. Amen. So, if you'll bow your heads, we'll pray for these prayer requests. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again so quickly. We ask for your blessings and your touch on all our church family. And we know Irene has problems, but and Cleve needs to know that him and her are loved here with their family. And if we if nobody do miss them, Lord, just, just touch their hearts and let them know they got a place to come. Marilyn, you know what's going on with her, Lord. Please give her a healing touch. And along with Mom, you know what's going on in that shoulder and neck. Just take it away, Lord. And hope. I pray that the doctors did the best they can, but they're not you. And you can remove that cancer from her and tell me and show those doctors your true power. And Julie, and Brother Mike and Debbie Combs, you know everything that's going on with Brother Mike, and we're sure that it wears on Sister Debbie, but give them the strength, Lord, and the ability to show what you can do. And Heidi, no word from her. We hope that everything's going fine with her and her father and all the lost in the world, Lord. So many, so many. And we just need you to open their eyes. And we need to minister and talk more about you to everyone we can. We just praise, honor, and glorify you and ask you to do all these prayer requests. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen. Can I ask for one more prayer real quick? You know, we adopt families as ours, you know. So tomorrow we're going to have a new adopted grandbaby so oh. I want to pray that Hope is okay when she has that baby tomorrow. Okay. Let's everybody bow and say a quick prayer for you said her name was Hope. Hope. Mm -hmm. Isn't that isn't that ironic, you know, yeah. ironic yeah. that we have a hope here? Dear Lord, we have one special request for this girl named Hope getting ready to deliver and add a new addition to Pastor and Marilyn's family. We pray that you'll have your hand upon her shoulder and 
the doctors and make sure that this little one comes out without any problems, Lord, because it will be a blessing to the church family and I'm sure to Jane and Marilyn. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My encouraging scripture for today is the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. And when you have it, say amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbed up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he pulleth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know now not the voice of the strangers. Amen. Amen. A sheep pen was typically typically has one door, which allows the shepherd and the gatekeeper. And I'm, it reminded me of what we were learning in Bible study about the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the sheep gate. And the gatekeeper, complete control over who may go in and out. Those who jump over the fence do not have permission and are considered thieves or robbers who intend to harm the flock Jesus stands guard to prevent false prophets from jumping into our lives. He is on constant watch and lays his life down to defend the entrance. We are oblivious to danger lurking beyond our pen because our faith rests in the love of our Lord and Savior. But when multiple flocks of sheep good, bad, or indifferent become blended, there is no need to worry. The good shepherd will call out to his sheep and they will come directly to him because they know his voice and will not confuse it with others. As God's people, we often become mixed up in or around or in the middle of sort things of this world. Sin is tempting us as we surround ourselves with the wrong crowd. God is all-knowing, always watching and calls us back to the fold. We will find him when we are lost because we know the sound of his voice. It is the only one we've chosen to follow. And we do not confuse it with others. And if you'll bow your heads. Dear Lord, you consistently protect our hearts and minds from dangers we do not understand. We love you, but when we step off the path and are lost, blinded, and tempted 
we listen for you. Your voice is precious and will guide us back to the fold where we belong. We thank you, our good shepherd, and remain faithful to you always and forever. In Jesus' blessed name, we humbly pray. Amen and amen. And of course, I always try to pick songs that kind of go with what I read. And the first one, if you'll turn to the blue book, number seven, Trust and Obey.
I'm sorry. All right. Good you know on that. Look at when you catch what she's got to do with my face. Yeah, we can get this. to read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Yep. That's what God showed to me before I came in tonight and I sat in the car and cried and prayed about it. Because God's right there for me all the time. I just got to make sure to lean on him. Amen. Pray. Yes. Yes. I'm ready. Thank you. 
so wonderful when you have a little one like that because he stood right there and just looked at you yes. and was entranced in the music that you were singing yes. that just mind the child yeah. through his eyes if we could only see what he sees through his eyes so wonderful brother Ralph yes sir would you have do you have a song for us? An old one, yes. You can look in your song books on page 205, and if you know it, sing it along with me. The Haven of Rest. Some people said they never heard that before. My soul is was Jesus. 
service today. We also ask that the sister, the sister Alicia, as she walked out here, let it not be something that can't be handled by you, Lord, because everything can be handled by you. But we ask for safe travel and give her, give her safe travel, Lord, as she seemed a little distraught, Lord. We also ask that you put your hand upon Pastor Jean's shoulder as she delivers your message 
to each and every one of us. May we take it into our heart and our mind and understand what he is teaching us from your word and that we hold it dear into our hearts. We ask all of this in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. We have a wonderful God. Amen. And right now I know your hearts are beating just like mine is as Alicia walked out of here. <clears throat> Something's happened. And uh, that's not going to diminish at all from who our God is. Amen. And we trust that as she, she herself brought up Psalm 23. Now we hear Psalm 23 so many times mm -hmm. at a funeral. But that song is not meant for that person that has passed away. It is meant for the living Amen. and it's meant to encourage the living to look to our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. It starts off with, the Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. Exactly. We, as Christians, choose to be led by the Spirit, God himself. And we need to pay close attention to what God is saying to us. Being saved is a very individual experience. And as our sister has left, I'm sure something has shook her up. I'm concerned as you are. Our first scripture, I got quite a few different ones we're gonna bounce around, but right now let's go to Romans chapter eight. Uh, we are going to come back to Psalm 23. But let's go to Romans 8 right now. And we're going to read 814. Romans 814. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. We can't just include everybody because you must have the Spirit of God in you and you must be led by that Spirit. We as People have a problem being led. We don't like it. We want to do it our way. We want to find out things ourselves. We don't always want to ask for help. I'm amazed at the number of songs in your scripture here today. That was talking about being led and being. What was the scripture you picked out? About John 10. John 10. Let's quickly look at it. John 10. So, right out of the gate, it's talking about, Most assuredly, I say unto you, he who does not enter into the sheepfold by the door, or climbs over some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. It goes on to speak about following the shepherd's voice in verse 4. 
The sheep are only going to follow the shepherd's voice. When sheep are put into this sheep fence, there are many herds. It's not just one. There's many herds. That's what the it speaks on about hearing their voice. When the shepherd walks out that gate and he calls his sheep, the sheep follow. Sheep follow. You all know what happens when you take a child by the hand and lead them. They're going to do one or two things. They're going to gladly take your hand and you lead them down the path, wherever that path goes, right? And that's a good child. And everybody loves that. But like many of us, the child will pull back and shake and fight and sometimes roll on the ground and scream and yell and Listen, I don't know that that little guy has ever done that. He may. He's usually pretty obedient. But he hasn't grown yet to want to have his own way. Like you and I, as we've grown up, and uh, God reaches down and says, follow me. And you don't reach your hand back up to him. And you say, no, I'm going to go do it my way. I'm, I'm not doing it your way. We've all walked that path many times, haven't we? Disobedient to God, don't want to listen to him, do not want to be led by the shepherd. We know that when we are out and about and driving, before we had our GPS, we used a map. Sometimes we'd uh, have some instructions wrote down on a piece of paper, right? The map gets us close, and then it says, okay, and when you get to this road, country road, you turn left, and when you get to this country road, you turn right. Well, the problem with the country road is it's curvy, mm -hmm. and we lose track of what we're doing and where we're going, and kind of like life, isn't it? And how tough it is to try to find your way through an area that you don't know or understand. And how many times have you been bullheaded and not stopped and asked for directions? I'll follow them. I got them wrote down. They're perfect. Well, the problem is, is the person that wrote, give them to you, they already know them pretty well. And they kind of forget a couple steps. And pretty soon you find yourself out in the middle of nowhere. Isn't it a blessing when you finally say, I'm going to stop and ask somebody. You flag down somebody. And you say, hey, can you help me out? I need to go here. And the person says, I know right where that's at. And I'm going to drive right past it. Follow me. Right? And you're willing to follow that person. You follow them right up to the doorstep wherever you're going, right? Thank goodness you chose to follow somebody who understood where they were going. Life's all about that, making choices. And we need to make the choice of following God. God has always desired to lead his people. And we're going to go through a couple stories here. God knows that we don't know our own way. We actually are rather helpless. But God is continuously trying to help us, us, these flawed humans, to guide us. If you want to turn to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23.
least I better do this at home. Jeremiah 10, 23. And it says, O oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in a man who walks to direct his own steps. We know that if we try to follow our own steps, the own, our, the own directions, we will end up with a headache, we'll end up hurt, we'll be in some type of chaos in our life if we choose to follow our truth. Isn't it wonderful, though, that God is constantly trying to guide us and lead us? God himself will be our guide if we let him. But we need to completely trust in him and his perfect guidance. We go through life thinking about things, our own experience. God, I'll do it my way. Until we finally say, I'm lost. I don't know where to go. God has infinite wisdom. Many, many, many times we find in the Bible that God is leading men. We find that when we read our scripture, that we are led by God. The pages of this Bible is full of information. It's a better than a GPS. There's a couple of ways that we can get this word. We can read it, which is one of the best ways. We can follow spiritual leaders Another good way. But we also have to make sure because in this world of wild technology, and I'll bring it up again, there are men, women, and others that are speaking not the truth. And we must be very, very wise. We need to pay close attention that the words that they're speaking, if you're going to listen to them, is the words of the Bible and not get twisted around just like the serpent did to Eve. Turn a couple words around, the whole meeting gets flipped upside down. You know, you've listened to, hopefully only a little bit, enough to know to run, these pastors that preach, the more you give, the more God will give you. Those same preachers have three, four thousand dollar suits. They have great big cars. They have bigger houses. And they have jet planes and everything else. It just drives me wild. Because if they were any type of preacher, and I don't know who care who hears this, if they're any type of preacher, then they're giving it right back to their community. Completely. I think about when I say that, how did Jesus live his life? Let me just be clear. As a chaplain did, he went out into the countryside, and that's why I encourage you guys to go out and talk to people, right? What happens? When they, with all the preachers, why did, what did Jesus say about all the preachers? You Pharisees, you liars, thieves, right? They were taken from the people and they're supposed to be supporting the, 
grieving widows and children, aren't they? But they took from them. No different than many, many, many pastors of this era. It's the same type of people. It's all about them. Okay, that turned me a left-hand turn in this sermon. But I have to say it, right? Because we must be warned. We must be warned. And anybody who's paying attention, you got to be warned. We cannot allow these false teachers. We have a God who is loving and caring. We have a God that's trying his best to lead each and every one of us. One of the wonderful examples that we can talk about is when God led his children out of Egypt. In the Exodus, we hear the story that they were in Egypt for over 400 years. They were in slavery. And they were delivered by the hand of God. The story is all wonderful and great. God delivered them. He got them over the Red Sea. Right? He led them out of Egypt. Those people were broken. Those people were in poverty. Those people were tortured. It was a violent time. And God chose to lead his people out of that circumstance. He chose to get them out. Though they didn't have to be there. They went to Egypt because of a famine. Should have only been there until the famine was over, until the rains came. But they stuck around. But when they left, and they followed the God out of uh, Egypt. He didn't plan on them being wanderers for 40 years. Because of their disobedience, that was their mistake again. They didn't want to be led. They were out in the desert, not listening to God, but only complaining to God. If you want to turn to Exodus 13, Exodus 13 and 21. Amen? Mm -hmm. 21. And the Lord went, what's that word? Went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of cloud by night from before the people. God stood before them and led them out of captivity. Now when they followed him, things were good. When they started grumbling, things became bad. What did they grumble about? Why did they need to grumble? My goodness. He give them manna every day. The scripture says he give them shoes that never wore out, clothes that never wore out. But they continued to grumble. So you can hold your finger or marker there. But turn to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. God's desire to guide us will require us to trust Him, to trust Him completely. And we know where we've been in our life. And we know how we have turned from God before. Chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways 
my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is so much higher than us. How he's trying to guide us out of our agony, but we keep turning back. We don't need to. If we would just listen to him. This was prophecy. Isaiah was telling us many years ago that God is here to lead us. Let's go back to Exodus quickly. We're going to go a little higher up. We're going to go back to Exodus 13 and go up to verse 17. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by the way, by way of land of the Philistines, although that was near. I don't have my map with me. But you have to remember the map where Egypt is and where they're headed. The land of the Philistines was a straight line. They could have gone east. And they would have gone through the land of the Philistines. Let's listen to more of this. God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war, and return and will return to Egypt. So what is going on between the Israelites and the Palestinians? They're fighting, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're fighting. They're at war. They were at war then, they're at war today. Yes. And if they would have headed straight over and gone into the land, there would have been a war. And God was afraid that if they would have got into the war, they would have all changed their minds and says, let's go back to Egypt. It was better than being in war. But why did they leave? There was a, they were in poverty. They were in chains. There was all kinds of violence going on. But he was afraid that they would leave the promised land because they were going to get into a war with the Philistines. In verse 18. So God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. He was leading them. They were following him. When they left their homeland in Egypt and started headed for home, God led them in a roundabout manner to get to Canaan. He had to take them through the wilderness. Think of your life. God has had to let you go through your wilderness before you found your way back to God. God's nature is to lead us by His Spirit. That's why we use the image of God as a shepherd. Now we're going to be going back to Psalm 23 again. Sheep are never driven. They are led. A caring shepherd would carefully choose the route that the flock would take. He would select this route, not for his own comfort, not for what was easy for him, but what was best for the sheep. He would choose a route that would have the best water for the sheep. He'd choose a route that had plenty of grass and grazing material for the sheep. He would find a route that would have the least predators 
Now it doesn't matter how many sheep you got. A predator is always going to show up. He's always going to show up. Why are we concerned about our sister? Right? Because we don't know what's going on. We will find out. But most importantly is we are going to be led by the Spirit to pray for our brothers and for our sisters. Because that's what we must do first, not later on. Okay, we do that first. Call on God. Call on His Spirit. Because that's what we have to be, is led by the Spirit. We want to make sure that there's few predators out there and that there's safe passages. A good shepherd is always going to lead his sheep. Let's look at Psalm 23, verses 2 and 3. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That nasty old shepherd. Going to make me lie down for their sweet grass. It's cool and it's refreshing. He leads me beside the still waters. You need that fresh water. And I want you to think about the words there. Still waters. He's not taking you past a fast moving brook that may suck you in or take the little ones and suck them in. Right? But it's nice and still waters. Now the water is moving to keep it fresh. But it's calm fresh and cool water, refreshing to the soul. Verse 3, he restores my soul. When, when you're in a peaceful spot in your life, by the brook, lying in the grass, your soul becomes refreshed. You know where your special place is, where you take the time to pray, and you take the time to read, and you take that nice, cool glass of water. It restores your soul. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness. That's where we're searching for, guys. And look at this. For his name's sake. Isn't that beautiful? He's leading us into a place of righteousness for his name's sake. Not for just us. Not for our glory. Not for anything special for him us, but for him. He's doing his best to lead us to a place that will be, as you look there, valleys with shadows on it. It's going to be cool. There's going to be a table with food on it. Let's look, go on, on over to verse 6. As we read this earlier, you could recite this almost word for word, couldn't you? But I, as always, I say we need to slow down. What does every word say? It's a beautiful song that gets read to many people at a funeral. Right? We can have peace and we can have comfort. And that's what we're trying to teach people in such a sad time. Verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If we will allow the shepherd and his spirit, God and his spirit to lead us, you'll have goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. And I will dwell, where at? In the house of the Lord, when? Forever. That's where we find the ultimate peace, isn't it? When we're going to be with him at that final moment. That's the what is being preached at a funeral. We, and that person has chose to be led by Christ. 
we can give that comforting thought that that person is now the house of the Lord forever. But you have to be led by the Spirit. You must be led by the Spirit. You can't just one day say, I give myself to the Lord, say I'm sorry, and go back to the lifestyle that you did yesterday. And it doesn't matter what others want to think. Scripture is the Scripture, and it is the truth. It's not our way, it's His way. What a wonderful Lord we serve. Here we have God leading us by His Spirit. The example of Him leading Israel out of Egypt by a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire. Something was right there leading His children. But we have something even better, don't we? Right? We don't have to look for something external. We don't have to go look for that cloud of smoke. Not when we've been given the Spirit of God. When we receive God's Spirit, we have Him and He can guide us daily. In every one of our steps that we take, we can allow Him to direct them. Leading is what God does best. Remember Romans 8, 14. Eight fourteen. That's right. It's on two pages. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Those that don't have the Spirit of God are not going to be led by God. And they're going to go do things their own way. And you know, we can say those things truthfully because we know through our own experience when we weren't following the Spirit of God. When we did not have the Spirit of God inside of us. <clears throat> we have to be willing to follow God so that He can lead us. Let's move to uh, Matthew 6.13. Following the Spirit of God has many, many valuable and practical benefits for each one of His children. For each one of us. Matthew 6 and 13. You've heard these words before. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We do not have to go through unnecessary temptation. Don't have to. And there they are in red letters teaching us as we pray and asking God, don't, don't lead me that way, right? And why would we be even asking that question? Because we're tempted, not by God, right? by our own lustful desires. Move to uh, Psalm 91. Psalm 91 and 3. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Satan is laying out traps for you. They're laid out all over. Because of who you were yesterday, he knows the things about you that you have deep in your mind. And he's going to lay out snares for you. And he's going to lay these traps. But as it says, surely who? He. God is going to deliver you from the snares. 
we can get out of those traps as we have the Spirit of God in us and we can reach out to God and call on His name. And let's move back a couple more to 78, Psalm 78. It's a big chapter, 78, 53. Fifty-three, Amen. Amen. But he, oops, but he led them on safely, so that they did not fear. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies. There are times that we need spiritual safety in our minds, in our thoughts, in what's going on. We allow our minds to wander aimlessly. Because we allow stuff in our minds. That's why I have preached so much about the internet and stuff. I know we're going to be there. We're all out there. Most of us. But we got to be careful that those things that we're seeing and hearing are not affecting us spiritually. Right? When those things jump up in front of us, swipe them away. You know as well as I do. Here you are watching something that's very safe. Could be a Christian song or music or somebody preaching. And the next thing you know, whoops, move that on by. Well, we had time to see it. That temptation's right there. But Satan knows that there's things there. There's things that we may watch or hear on the TV or people talking. And we have to use these types of scripture. And he led them on safely. He's going to lead you. He's going to lead me. If we're going to call on his wonderful name. If you want to look back on that Psalm 23, 3. We are all, we know that God is here to lead us. I don't think there's a debate on that. He's doing it for our own good. And we must recognize that he is leading us down these paths. He's leading us down those paths to serve his kingdom. It's for him. It's not for us. We're going to do it for his name's sake. Not for ours. So please, we need to make sure that we're allowing him to direct our steps, direct our conversations, and then, as I say conversations, that's the testifying to others. The testifying of what God has done. How he has moved us from this world to his. Being spirit-led. He may be leading us to somebody who's hurting. He may be leading us to someone that just needs a touch. Maybe it's a new job for us. Maybe it's some hurting folks that we have heard about. Or as our sister had to leave. We know. and We're not, we're not going to stop praying until we know she's safe. Being spirit-filled. There's many examples in the scripture about being spirit-filled and how men would in, intertwine their lives with others. Remember the story of Peter and John as they are walking, heading for the temple to pray. It's a time to pray. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's time to go in and pray. And as they, they're walking around the temple... There's all, remember Jerusalem's a really busy, busy city. They come to the gate called Beautiful. Now during this time as they're walking around, they see a beggar lying there. Um, seeing a beggar is not something uncommon because there's many people that just don't have things, right? They didn't have a social place to put somebody that was lame, that couldn't walk. 
But Peter's attention turned towards this particular beggar. For some reason. And Peter headed straight over to him. No different as if you're driving down the street and God says, make a right hand turn. Mm -hmm. Right? Stop and see somebody. Now, you're at the gas station. Hey, walk over there to the other side and just say hi. See what's going on over there. Peter and John went over to this beggar. The Lord had directed Peter to talk to him. They were just having to go to a prayer meeting. I didn't want to be interfered with. I, I got to go to prayer so I can get back to do my chores, whatever that may be. But Peter was directed. And now we have those famous words that Peter said. This man is reaching up, wanting some alms. Remember the scripture? It's Acts 3, 6. Silver and gold I have none, but such as I give, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And he rises up and he walks. That beggar was at the right spot, had the right attitude. Him and God must have been communicating. And Peter was definitely in a prayerful uh, prayer life to be able to sense God and his spirit. And Peter, being led by the spirit, walks to the beggar. John, right there with him. Clearly, that beggar's life was changed forever, instantly. Instantly. And then you think, was it just the beggar's life? Of course not. Now the beggar can help his family. And he's going to speak about this man, Jesus Christ. And quickly, we have another evangelist. Each of you are evangelists here. You don't like those words. That means I got to do something. Well, yeah. Yeah. Being led by the Spirit. That's why I was saying earlier what I had on my mind this morning and to bring up about John being led by the Spirit. She sings Psalm 23. And it's like, oh my, a couple of the songs is being led by the Spirit. But boy, this is just beautiful. We're all being led by the Spirit this evening. And as I said, Satan is constantly trying to draw us down. And we're going to pray for our sister even more. Because she's still in my heart. And hopefully she's still on yours. And we're going to find out what's going on. What is that word that she doesn't like? Unspoken. Yeah, she left us with an unspoken prayer, didn't she? <laughs> we don't need to know all the answers. All we need to know is she's well. And she's in God's arms. Amen. And her family. All right, I'm going to pray. You want to pick out a song, brother? Thank you, Lord, for your love. Jesus, how you led us, Lord. We're thankful that you are constantly leading us as a shepherd. As a shepherd leading his sheep. Guide us, Lord, as we choose you to be our shepherd. We want to hear your voice. Not just when we're together here, but Lord, when we're reading your word, when we're praying, I want to hear your voice, Jesus. When it's just you and me together or whether, we're, or whether we're in a crowded room, allow me to hear your voice and be led by your spirit. That's my desire for myself. That's my desire for each and every one of you that you feel his spirit and are led completely by his spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I love that song she sang. That was beautiful. Yes. Yes. That was beautiful. I was crying sitting there. What page are we on, brother? We got another. 225. 